Wow, look at all these different skins and different types of playstyles. I really like all these characters a lot. Except you. I despise you. Hello, and salutations fellow Skullgirls gamers. It is I, Gaiman Hoshi. Now a quick question for all of you. What do you do when you lose your price fight streak or lose that one story fight over and over again? Losing your Theo and energy capsules. Or doing that one rift base that causes you anguish because of a certain character variant. Especially prize fight when you are trying to maintain a streak that was more significant than getting that C on a test in your math class? Do you calmly start a new streak run? Or B, do you curse and slam your phone down on that certain character for ruining your life and or your run, whatever, and wish death upon the character's variant to be nerfed 800 feet down the ground straight into hell? Don't lie, we all know it's the second option. Now I didn't create this list to complain about certain variant characters in the game. Oh no, I'm here to expose and reveal these nasty vials of filth that run amok in the game. These are the top 16 variants in Skullgirls Mobile that ranges me to mild annoyance to want to write a 10 paragraph essay on why this variant should be nerfed. Now, like every other list, this is all based on my 2-3 years speculations and how I played this game through my own experiences. Even though I played this game for a very long time, I still consider myself as an intermediate player on both PvE and PvP. So you might be like in the comments, oh well you can beat this variant easily by using this variant. Frankly, I don't care, and not everyone has that certain character to counter the other. Just know that these character variants are the ones that I have the displeasure of playing against. From daily prize fights, to daily events, to rifts and story. So if you find other variants to be annoying, by all means go right ahead and comment on which one can make your inner stove boil. Oh, and by the way, another rule is one character per variant. Got to keep this interesting, none of us wants to see 5 nurses in the top 16 list. Now time to go over my inner rage built upon and let it out on these variants that made me suffer for years. Who will our star be tonight? Is there truly an annoying parasol variant? Sure, you can have the diamonds fill in the role because of their stats or whatever, but there has to be one that stands among the rest. Shadow Ops? Nah, she needs to spawn one tier to actually do something. Ooh, maybe Starcrossed? Nah, she's way too easy to counter. There has to be one that puts the other defensive parasols to shame. The one that can make people's feet shuffle, you know what I'm saying? Some, well, there has to be a variant that can at least cause a mild inconvenience. Hmm, let's see here. Oh, wait, you. Say hello to Regally Blonde, a parasol that nobody dares to talk about because of her regal status. But, um, Game and Hoshi, Regally Blonde isn't that annoying. Yes, I know, shut up. Sure, Regally Blonde doesn't get phones thrown across the room with the pile of dead controllers. But her first passive can be somewhat of a nuisance since it, it's a heads or tails situation. Oh, what's this? Reset the blockbuster if a blockbuster is used by the opponent. Not to mention you're playing the coin flip knowing that your combo will automatically be scuffed if she laps up those blockbuster meters. No, my precious blockbuster meter. Sure, she ain't a defensive build or the hottest variant fashion that everyone's talking about. But she can still do her job pretty well, even if it's a bit minuscule. Her ability to waste your precious time, just like when your mom is calling for you to eat supper for the 20th time, it makes you realize she does have the annoying charm in a very special way. What is her second passive then? Oh, hmm. Well, that's not worth worrying about, that's for sure. Who will our star be tonight? They say RNG can be one of our greatest saviors at times. A phrase that any gamer will scoff at. Screw RNG, what has it ever done for me? Why is it when I pray for good luck and fortune, something gets ruined for me every freaking time? I'm looking at you, auto block. I hate you the most. Why do you come for me at the most inconvenient times and block for the opponent whenever I try to launch them? But we will get back to you. Anyways, a genie can give you three wishes, but she never told you they were death wishes. Oh. Hello Miss Shantae, what dice of fate will you roll me today? Meet this little devil variant. She's able to obtain three wishes. Three? What about me? From miasma to thorns, auto block to final stand, this genie in the card can get away with so many things if you keep her alive on the battlefield, especially with those certain assistants. 
that would kill her fast because at the same time, actual normal people wash their hands. She will get three nice presents, either to prolong the wait or make life harder on yourself. Wow, Game and Hoshi, she sounds terrible to fight against. Why place her so low? Well, the computer player doesn't know about the juicy second variant, and she's a pretty easy takedown. Also, she does play the role of being a more offensive fighter than a defensive one. Of course, there are other competitors looking at you, Dread, Class, and Phrase, but honestly, those three never bothered me either. They are all easily counterable as well. I just chose this one because of how, you know, chance can screw someone over. God have mercy when she acquires two heals and a barrier, or Miasma Thorn's final stand combo. Uh, well, the experts can take it down pretty easily, but sure, she can make a fight last a few seconds longer. Who will our star be tonight? Defense is the best offense, they say. But what if offense manifests into defense? Oh boy, then you get this dude. A king is not without its peasants in the back, cowering in fear from his sheer masculinity. Say hello to this beastly freak of nature, a man wolf with insane strength and ability to dissipate any person with him shooting at you into his arms. My god, that damage. Once this muscle grunt lands one grab onto you, say goodbye to any plans of being saved by any ICU valentine, cause he denies any ICU ability or final stand ability to an ICU later and make you write your final will. Oh, and by the way, this guy inflicts withering as well. So say goodbye to your BBs. No man, don't touch me. But well, honestly, even when this big look can flip your advantage state, you can still continue to apply pressure. He's another dead weight on a defense team at times, and may end up dead when you don't realize he doesn't grab you with those big, filthy claws. It's only when you don't pay attention to how he attacks is when you lose. But if you know how to deal with him, he isn't all too bad. Also, not to mention that second passive is a warning to not get hit by him once. Literally, he can turn one small punch into a character's funeral. But Beowulfs aren't known for their defensive characters. But, you know, this one. This one can be a small exception. Uh, yeah, well, even then, they aren't that bad. And, you know, this guy does more well on offense than defense. But, you know, this guy's still a big threat. Who will our star be tonight? So, I have a lot of favorite genres, but RPG is one of my favorite game genres. But there are certain things I hate about it. Random critical hits, status effects, useless enemy encounters. Well, yeah, of course I hate all of those. But we are talking about a mobile fighting game, so why go on a tangent about RPG games? Well, have you ever heard of Regeneration? So imagine a defensive character who punishes you for using a move to deal more damage and benefits themselves. Well, that doesn't sound all too fair. Too bad, life was never fair. Meet Bloodbath. Well, she seems a bit violently drenched. The woman covered in human's inner fluid has one method, to heal and to bleed. Literally a vampire. This special noise loves to make sure she denies you of ever thinking about pressing your finger on the lower half part of the screen every time one decides to let one of these special moves or aka blockbuster moves hit. This freak of nature starts to heal her health back. The more you take from the bull, the more she begins to regain what you have dealt. Oh and don't think you're safe. Oh no, while she slowly regains her juices back, you will soon become a hollow husk the more you try. Well. Why can't I just bleed her back? Uh, dude, don't you see? She's made of blood! Any bleeding on her and she'll slurp it up like a free milkshake. Sounds pretty hard to beat, yeah? Well, kind of. Sure, she can, she can, you know, cause you to lose health slowly and heal. But the special moves don't count. Even though those Walmart blockbusters sometimes do less damage, the really big ones will take her out easily. Or you can just wail on her faster than she can regen, making her not that tough. But then why her? And she's just a personal noise. Sure some other Elizas can cause annoyances, but this Eliza can take that cake. A bloody one, that's for sure. Who will our star be tonight? Okay, so I'm going to be a bit honest here. Cerebella fighters weren't all that tough to me. Sure, there is the one that makes longer combos irrelevant, the one that has their own personal death note, 
and if you do touch her, well, so help yourself. Some other nuisances here and there, but there was one personal one. A promise, actually, I made to my younger self when you start playing this mobile game. The amount of hate I had for this variant, which is none other than her. Yeah, I know, this variant is exactly the variant that pulls people's hair in frustration, but yes, I have experienced it. The, the torture, yes. Honestly, nowadays this variant isn't that bad, but I remember facing two of these tanks in story mode while I was playing a lower level bronze parasol. Suffering because these guys gained two of the most defensive buffs, freaking unflinch and the defense. This was the time when auto block wasn't a thing. Like I said, nowadays they aren't as annoying, but I remember pouring sweat and tears when I first picked up this game, and these two became my eternal demons. Now, you might be saying, that sounds like a skill issue. Shut up, this is my own list, and I see these two as being a pain in my backside. Literally, they forced me out all of my energy gatorades and chaos emeralds in order to beat them. These two still irk me more than any other cerebellas. Yes, I find this one more annoying than the slushy freeze and the one that literally is named a criminal. Slap on some annoying moves and voila, you have your defensive unflinched annoyance. You know, at least they're perfect palm to my list. At, at, at least that's worth mentioning. Who will our star be tonight? Here's a plot twist. It's not Lovecrafted. Be warned, this nice looking lady seems normal, like she doesn't pack much of a fight at first. Everything seems sort of normal, you know? An average normal squiggly defending a rift or her prize fight from being defeated? Well, once that bar is about to hit zero... What? What? What is this? One thing that hurts me more when playing PvE is when my time is being wasted. Because once that clock hits 30 seconds, you go straight into panic mode, and when you still have two characters left to kill, you know that you don't want your 40th streak to go down to zero. The fighter will make sure she does exactly that. At first, she seems harmless as dirt, but then this Frankenstein comes out back alive with half of the health you dealt to her brought back in a fresh new plate. You think that's just a minor nuisance to waste your time? Now she has 5 stacks of hit me back juice on her as well for 20 seconds! Well, that doesn't seem that bad. Until you notice 20 seconds translating into fighting game time is, you know, forever. Also, don't forget about Fright Night, her mark we to waste even more time. On the bright side, to make her balanced, she does start off with like a million debuffs when she de revives. Until you notice she pumps one punch woman when every freaking debuff gives her, what, a 50% power boost? Better hold on to your two fingers for your entire life, because. You don't want this variant to send you to your early death wish, as well as not committing no life on yourself. Yeah, I don't have plans to take this variant out on the date. Who will our star be tonight? A lot of you wouldn't find a bronze character to be that annoying, as they are literally the bottom of the barrel, the kid's first Pokemon that they picked up, or that first toy they can play around with. Then like Andy, dropping them never to be picked up again. Although some grasp onto some bronzes, looking at you bad hair day, we have some bronze variants who don't completely suck at their jobs offensively, which means the defensive bronze shouldn't really exist. Well, they do, but they are most likely a little small chihuahua barking at you. But this bronze isn't at all a chihuahua, more like a feral cat. Wait, Gaiman, you didn't put Meow and Forever Perfect Dark? Claw and order? Are you high? Hmm, you do make convincing arguments. Meow and forever being a nuisance applying a final stand combo to stuns. Perfect dark disabling buffs that make you forced to switch as well as claw and order being the better regally blonde. All fair arguments, but no, I find this feline to be the most annoying of them all. First of all, her variant name is already making me throw up its on my mouth a little. Second, evasion. I hate it. A buff that literally makes any combo irrelevant, makes it already an annoying buff. Then to put salt into the wound, she gains haste and has a chance to turn any debuffs into her own world of hurt. Legit, if she had better stats, she would become a whole nuisance. And while the other misfortunes are little boogers as well, they can be dispatched pretty easily. The fact that this is the only bronze that can make me drop my combo and pull out a reverse uno card to reverse me back 
is honestly pretty impressive, not bad. But my hatred towards this variant exceeds my impressiveness of how much this card can sometimes kick me to the curb if I decide to bring out my weaker fighters. Still, not bad, you feline monstrosity. Who will our star be tonight? Alright, so imagine everything I have said in the last section and apply it over here because now we have this slapstick nonsense over here. That's all, folks. So it was either between this and Untouchable for the most annoying Peacock variant. Let's see, one can get out of my combos for free and the other can gain unflinching. But it is reactable and can be removed through moves that can remove debuffs like Eliza's Chaos Banish. Yeah, I can clearly see who wins. As I already talked about my distaste towards evasion, you may ask what's the difference between just kitten and that's all folks. Well my dear viewer, I'm glad you asked. While just kitten can get out of any hits them 5% of the time, this cartoon lolly has a 15% chance of a get out of jail free card. Like really? And not only that, this child can hit hard. And when I say that, I mean every time she slips past your combos, she gets free critical damage poured onto your biscuits. Also, she makes sure that you take your sweet time killing her as she disables your critical hits when she stays alive. How does this 1890s cartoon mini mouse disable my crit hits and get hers when she dodges my hits for free? Unless you pull out the cross and cursor, she'll make sure you don't land your final grounded hit before she starts becoming your punching bag. The next thing you'll know is that you'll see the Looney Tunes ending and see that cursed phrase. Who will our star be tonight? As we now reach the halfway point, from here on out, the rest of these variants will be the ones that frequently kill my runs. And by the runs, I mean pathetic 40 to 50 streak prize runs. Yeah, I'm a pretty painful mediocre player on both PvE and PvP, I, I know that. Now, what can I say about pain roll variants? Well, first her Marquee abilities make me want to dropkick all of them. But I'm not talking about the Marquis that much. They do play some core aspects of annoyance, but I mostly try to stay within the variants. Well, first of course there is the trap, the variant that becomes impossible to kill after she gets one single kill. By and cold, this piece of garbage being a fusion of both Overclocked and every Thorns character, along making your Valentine safeguard being as useful as a tiny dagger. But there is one, a menace, the one where even Playing defensively can't save you. Spare me, Miss Neuromancer. Yep, Neuromancer. She's deadly and she's hyperactive, a deadly pain wheel that spares no mercy even on the poor fools who believe blocking can solve all their problems. This scary variant is Neuromancer, a diamond pain wheel who completely throws all concepts of blocking and teaches the beginner players to play with their timings more than their punishing game, as she will punish them for trying. Every time this Spartan hits you while blocking, she gets 10% blockbuster meter while draining yours until you have no way to retaliate. Once she finishes sucking your offense juice, she's ready to strike back harder with the obvious BB3 everyone equips. Not only does she want death from the fighter in front, but dishes it to those on the back. Any blockbuster damage she deals to the main fighter is 50% damaging the fights that aren't even fighting. What kind of nonsense is this? Even my fighters who aren't doing jack squat against this cruel beast also takes damage for no reason? If that isn't cheating, I don't even know what is. For real, my heart goes out to those who went up against this monster for the first time not knowing what she did. I have felt your pain too. Who will our star be tonight? We're pretty far right now in the list, and you've been wondering, Gaiman, where the hell is Umbrella? Why is she so high in the list? None of her variants are that annoying, but no, you are mistaken, there is but one, and it's the one that caught me off guard. Nobody really expected it until we saw what she could do. Also for some reason, why is it a red variant? Because meat rose tinted, I swear to Venus and Aeon, whoever decided to make the combination of barrier and thorns as an assist move deserves to be sent down to the chief's minds. Cause I can't deal with this amount of awful ideas. Okay, maybe it isn't that awful. But here is the devil in disguise. A fighter that causes thorns and barriers again to be applied if the fighter loses around 25% of health or something like that. And by the fighter, I mean each 
individual fighter and not just Rose Tinted herself. Basically, she becomes a Binding Cold supporter who does what Binding Cold does, but to all her teammates. Like, I was already debating if Binding Cold should make it onto the list, but why need her when we have the next infuriating thing? To this day, I never go against this little she-devil unless I have a really good reason to do so. Even the reigning champ can't stand up against this Amy Rose colored supporter. Also, I thought the blue variants were mostly in charge of defensive measures, not this red supposed offensive fighter. Like, I did put the Jin and Beast in this list, but like, come on! Who will our star be tonight? Here comes the king of all defense and tanks, Mr. Big Band himself. Ah yes, which of these tanky monstrosities should I choose? It was pretty hard to choose which Big Band was worth putting into this list as they all had potential to be annoying. Except for a few of them not being that annoying, of course. There is Troublemaker and Dream Band, which are always solid picks for many people. But I decided to go with the one that made me hate him from the start and still to the end. And his name is fitting too, because he really is pure evil. Good old Resonant Evil. Two silvers in a row? Wow, I must have lost it. Again, between four big bands, Heavy Metal included, I had to make a hard decision of who was annoying. Then I noticed a character that can literally make any character helpless just by touching him. I always hated the concept of stuns in games. The fact that I can't move and my own character stands there as he or she is about to get the full brunt force of the enemy and just taking it. Then I noticed this huge giant piece of rust in front of me. Immediately I knew I would hate him. Anytime you decide to touch him, you're putting your faith into chance as he has an opportunity to gain armor and when you decide to keep attacking him while having said armor, your character will have a chance to stay stunned a long enough time for him to start his own combos on you. Unless you have characters like Doubleicious, you can kiss your keister goodbye because either two things will happen. One, your time will be up because of this dude taking hits and waiting for his armor to go away. Or two, you go all out offense and get trashed on. So you know, decide whether to have your teeth get kicked in or slowly get tortured with your fingers getting crushed. Now that is pure evil. Who will our star be tonight? Number 5 is Model Leader. Now wait, 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 hold on, hold on. I know about this variant and how much everyone loves using her in defense teams. How permanent auto block is the most inconceivable sin to exist in the game. But I do know of 4 other variants that cause my runs to lose because of them. For now, let me explain about the stupid annoying garbage variant. Anyways, <clears throat> Model Leader, really obnoxious, very obvious she's, Andy, she's dandy for the job. The fun job to make every beginner slash intermediate player lose every prize fight because of her. Now first let's talk about auto block. I hate it. That's about it. It really doesn't need any more explanation and a lot of people don't need to know it as much as well. Anywho, to be honest, are there any ways I could talk about this variant? We all know why we hate her and we all know why she's the infamous character dominating the most defense teams. So instead of ranting about these very not well made variants, I'll tell you the case secret to beating her. Come closer. Just use bad hair day and a valentine just in case. Boom, problem solved. This is partially why I put her in the fifth spot because nowadays I have an easier time with her but I still won't deny when she has those moments she really does stand out like a huge growing pimple. Disgusting and makes me want to throw my phone at a pop sensation to show my true disdain towards a variant like her. Oh, and before I continue my next section, remember Blue Shift exists on her and she gets more defense. Who will our star be tonight? I swear, why does every annoying variant have every villain as lemons in their names? Meet Evergreen Evil. Alright, first rule fighting ev against Evergreen Evil. Don't underestimate her. Once you do, you will die. Just remember that one rule and you should be fine. I. Well, not really. Every time I see this variant, I would usually think it's not all that bad, but the amount of times I got clapped by this variant is enough for me to put this one this high on the list. In the top 5. You thought Barrier and Thorns were the worst combination to exist like peanut butter and eggs on a sandwich? Well, my mom packed me jelly and eggs at one time, and that made me go... <laughs> Wait, why am I talking about this? Oh right, that's exactly how I feel about this variant. You better bring your strongest fire types and hope she doesn't change her color. 
because when she loses health and you attempt to hit her, this slime ball gets regen and thorns making her gain health while you lose health, annoying piece of green turd. Not only this, but any buffs received by her posse also gets additional seconds on their buffs by at least 5 extra seconds. Well, that doesn't seem all too much, but remember, 5 seconds in like video game time translates into 20 seconds. Do you know why she's even called Evergreen? Cause she, one, she takes forever to kill with all these thorns and regens, and two, she just heals a lot. Yeah, that's it. Being a passive vapor wave is another thing, but being a support as well for a fellow crew? Nah, man, that's way too much. But if you think I hate fighting against this green jello so much, then you forget that there are three more entries on this list still. Who will our star be tonight? We have made it. It's time for the big three. The three that cause me anguish and migraines whenever I play against them. These are the characters that turn my brain into try-hard mode and make sure they are the top priority to be defeated. Well, I guess you could throw both Model Leader and Evergreen on the same boat, but these three are menaces till this day, dominating both the defensive meta and everyone using them. The funny thing is, I don't even have these three yet! And I hate seeing them in every prize fight, even on the ones that don't match with the prize fight or Rift's battle incentive. But let me calm down and introduce you to an AI built catnip, so your stress levels never go down until the match is over. Maybe it's already over for you though. <sighs> it's overclocked. Say hello to our only neutral themed character. This mean lean pink machine has one sole purpose, to make sure you do the most stupidest decisions in order to destroy this hunk of scrap. There are some characters you can't take a second off to try and play a defensive playstyle. Vaporwave, I'm looking at you. So what does she do? Well, remember when I did my small rants about fighters with barriers? Well, this ugly mug decides to use it to annoy you as well. Better pound on her fast before she takes a swig off of her chug jug, because every crucial second you leave her alone, she will get a barrier, and if you decide to make her reach 5 stacks of it, well, consider yourself done, because now you're screwed offensively and defensively. Might as well save you the trouble hit the quit button up there. Once this furry automaton reaches those 5 stacks, any hit on her will now be reflected back at you forever for the entire match. Don't think you're safe when you block either because she will make sure all of her attacks are unblockable when reaching 5 stacks of barrier. I'm done talking about this wannabe pink panther. Just, just get this variant off my screen. Who will our star be tonight? Hey, do you remember back in the list I was talking about how annoying regeneration is and all that nonsense? Well, thing is, while Bloodbath can slowly regenerate her health, she needs the opponent or you to use a blockbuster in order to accomplish her eternal night slurp fest. But imagine a character regenerating for like a whole entire match. Also, it's about to get scarier. There is no way you can play any weaknesses to her either. Cause there lies splitting images. I'm even surprised that this variant didn't come out on number 1 or the top. Now then, this variant is very simple to explain. Basically, if you're winning, she's going to be regenerating forever. That's it. Also, she does have that permanent immunity. Oh, what was that? You wanted to stack bleeds on her? Well, too bad. Oh, nice stun crew you have there. Except you'll never get the chance. What I hate about this variant is that when you are winning, you are losing. But when you are losing, you are winning. You might be scratching your head wondering what that even means, but trust me. Once you have fought a character like this, you know exactly what I mean. But I'll tell you this, unless your variants are equipped with a freight hitting blockbuster, you'll never get a single dent off of this Walmart clone schoolgirl. And by the way, don't play by herself, her real version, or don't be racist and play with her color because she'll make sure you regret that decision. I would definitely put this light variant as number one. But recently a certain other character has been annoying me way more than they should have. A real war criminal to society and even seeing her pop on my screen gives me PTSD. It's time for me to introduce you to the number one. Who will our star be tonight? Now, for the one variant who annoys me the most in all of Schoolgirls Mobile. I'm pretty sure there are counters to her. There are ways to beat her much easier. But 
Jesus Christ, why does she exist? Assassin's Creed. Literally, I don't want to give this one any recognition, as my hatred towards this man is beyond transcendent space and time. But, I mean her. It's funny how all Valentines play a support class role. As a nurse character, it does make sense, right? But, Assassin's Creed? Nope, she can play all roles. Defense, support, even offense. She has it all. She also combines every aspect of things I hate in each character from previous entries. Regen? Oh yeah, she definitely has that. Immunity to debuffs? Not exactly, but you were wishing you didn't place it on her. The ability to not make you use a blockbuster? Yeah, trust me, you don't want to use any blockbusters if you know what's good for you. Wasting your time? Of course, why not? Prestige exists. Normally, I don't try to include Marquis and Prestige in a list like this, but she makes a new kind of exception. An inexcusable exception. I cannot fathom. The fact that this variant has way too much and plays a cancerous role on the defense team, her main ability. I look at it. Look at it. I want all of you to look at it. Using a blockbuster will result in losing 15% of your health and suffer heavy bleeding for 5 seconds, which means this monster steals about 1 fourth of your character's life juice. Not only that, this is high rate robbery considering the fact that this isn't even her true form. But then there's the second ability, gain 3% health when nearby an opponent suffering bleed. Like what? Not only are you dealing absurd amount of damage whenever I do use a blockbuster, you're life draining me 3% of my health? Nah, nah that's way too much. Even splitting images regens 1% at a time. I have to use these blockbusters to exert my dominance and you just take it like a sip of lemonade? Then there are the price fights and rifts that cause you to suffer with bleeding out your essence. Especially those price fights and rifts that make you bleed forever. The main story in a picture book becomes your will and testament because now she'll be slurping up any bleeding occurring throughout your body. I know why her name was has an assassin in it because she was assassinating almost half of my prize fight runs. Yeah, keep eating that 100% cow cow chocolate because you know this variant's not all sweet and completely bitter to the bone. Then again, that other part of your name Green makes also a lot of sense. Since you are stealing my points away, donating them to your own master. There are no other variants that stress me out. Literally, I pray to Jeebus that she gets nerfed sooner or later than good old Assassin's Creed. And to sum it all up, I hate her. Please, please get, please, please do something about her, please. All right, sorry, sorry. Let's all take a deep breath and calm ourselves down. <sighs> Are we good? Yes? Okay. I might have killed my voice in that last part. <laughs> but honestly, I'm glad schoolgirls have these different variants and references towards them. It's always fun to fight these characters and come up with new strategies against them. Even if I hate characters like Assassin's Creed and Splitting Images, I'm half joking when I wanted these two nerfed. It's more challenging to fight difficult battles, and maybe you can find different methods next time, or level up your moves to come back and become stronger so you can get that W. That's why I do like this game. This mobile game stands so much different from the rest, and I hope that you train your characters harder to easily beat that annoying variant that's troubling you in the future. I hope you like this video, I'm hoping to make new lists like this, and I would love to see comments on which variants you hate the most. This video for me was very ambitious and took me a lot of time to do. So please, if you are interested in seeing more of my work, I would love to see all you fellow players support me. Would you like to see this type of video more or less? Also, if you want to see more fun Skullgirls mobile content from me, just hit that special red button. I'm pretty sure it's black now, but be able to give me any special ideas. In conclusion, I hope. Assassin's Creed gets a terminal illness and the rest chick is the better Valentine Diamond. Buh bye bye Yo, let's go!